Hi everyone, I am putting together some of my leftover Stamp Camp cards and I thought I would show you one. This was a fun one that um, was based on a card I got in the mail. I got this in the mail from one of my team members, Pat, and she sent this fun little fold here and it was really cute. I hadn't seen one like this before. It reminds me of a few different types of cards, maybe a Z fold or this one. Um, I think she was saying this one was a W fold. I kind of think it looks like a banner pop up too so I've seen that um, it can be called different things and I kind of did a little bit of research to see like I wanted to know um, who the originator was so I can give credit and I found some going back years I found some from just a few months ago and some on Pinterest from five years ago and, and on and on and on so um, I really don't know where it originated but it's super cute this one for me originated from my team member Pat and I thought it was a really cute clever little fold so I wanted to do it at stamp camp because I thought that people would enjoy it and I was looking through what uh, pieces I wanted to share at Stamp Camp, and I wanted to share the Heart and Home Suite. This is a mega suite, it's huge. It has two stamp sets, two dies, paper, doilies, uh, embellishments, really fun gingham ribbon, there's a folder, everything. So it's a huge thing, and it's in the mini catalog. This is going through June. So I know our an annual catalog ends tomorrow, or the next day, it ends on, um, the last day to buy is Tuesday, but I don't know when this is going to post. So anyway, it ends. But this one is going to continue on for a while because this goes through um, June. So you've got a little while on this one. It has a lot of good elements, so you're going to want to take advantage of that. Um, I'm going to use these doilies, um, the paper, all of it. And then for what I used as my accents, I just look at this paper. Do you ever notice that? you got all the colors right here. Uh, listed so you know uh, what kind of things to pull what kind of ink colors you want to use things like that um, also at stamp camp I like to show different techniques and ways to do things and I hadn't used blender pens in a while so we're going to use blender pens okay so here we go here are the two stamp sets there are two die sets like I said uh, this is one of them and I think I put the other one away already I did uh, but anyway, I cut the stuff already because I have everything already, anything that's just a die cut, I sometimes pre-cut for Stamp Camp because I don't want Stamp Camp to go too long. So these are the pieces, and there we go. Already cut out, and I need a doily. And I'm going to go with the Cinnamon Cider doily. Okay, so here are the pieces. Now I will give you some dimensions. This is a basic gray card base and it's scored at five and a half and it's four and a quarter long by 11 and um, that's the base. You're also going to need a skinny strip like this. This is one inch by 11 and then this one is scored differently. This one is scored at two and three quarters and then at five and a half and I want to say eight and a quarter but I want to not get that wrong. Yes, eight and a quarter. So two and three quarters, five and a half, and eight and a quarter. I think I'll try and write that down in, as a caption so you don't have to back up and rewind and listen to that several times. So hopefully I can get that caption to work in my video um, when I do editing. Okay, so we've got that going on. And then we just have things we want to decorate with. Now I'm going with the paper from that collection. Oh, I'm missing a piece. Let me see if I have another one. Okay. So, this is paper right from that same mega suite, and it's called, um, oh, I can't remember. I think it's called Heart and Home. Heart and Home. I love it because it's got all kinds of wood grain papers on one side, and then the, the flip side are all these florals, kind of really um, nice little papers here. It's a whole collection, and I love all these patterns. But on the back is a gray and white kind of planks in different directions and thicknesses and configurations, but they're all like that on one side, so they're great for all kinds of backgrounds. I love that. Um, anyway, so we've got that going on. This is going to go on the front of our card, one of them with the plank. And I think my example has the diagonal plank. That's a cute one. I ran out of that for people at Stamp Camp, so um, I kept this one that just goes straight across for myself um, so that they would all have the same one. Here's another one of the backs. I love that. We're going to use that as an accent piece. So here's some accent piece. So this is just going to go straight down. Right here in the center. And 
and that's cut four by five and a quarter. And then I've got this little doily, and that's going to go in the center, but slightly high. So center back and forth, but slightly high in the upper bit of your card. Just kind of find the center and then bump it up a bit. Just a little bit. There you go. And then I've got these little accent pieces I cut from that same paper. And all I did was kind of trim the ends a little bit um, by giving them an angle just so they weren't perfectly square. Okay. Oh, there we go. Alright, and those are just going to go down. I like to put down all the flat pieces just so that I can kind of get them out of my way. So I'm going to go ahead and attach those, but then I'll leave the um, embellishments for the end because they're going to add bumpiness and I want to do the inside without bumpiness. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. And this is just um, a piece of the paper from that pack. This one is an inch thick and this is uh, three quarters of an inch thick and I made them three and a quarter by three and just kind of snipped off the end. So that's just a little accent for some color to the front. Now for the inside, you don't have to decorate with a background designer series paper, but I thought that would be pretty. So this is also from that same pack. And you can go with the wood side or you can go with the floral. I'm going to go with the floral. And I'm going to go ahead and put those down just again to get them out of my way. Okay, so I got those pieces out of my way. Now I'm going to focus on these little squares. So my gray square, this is basic gray again, and the gray square, I know it's funny to have a lot of gray, but it's got that background here and I'm kind of going for like a neutral, um, different look for it. Um, anyway, basic gray squares, these are two and a quarter inch squares and I have four of them and then I needed four two inch squares to sit inside. So let's do the stamping on our squares. Now. I was looking at the stamp sets that come in the set, and you can go crazy, and um, like Pat did, she had uh, really pretty butterflies and flowers from different sets. I was trying to keep within the suite. So I was looking at the suite, and I thought, what can go together? So um, there's always a couple things you can do together. You can have a miss you on the uh, outside if you haven't seen someone in a while. You can change the dimension of my, um, so this is just a half an inch strip. I got it from my scrap bin. Um, you can make it a little thicker and go with any of the other ones. So glad we're family. Um, things like that can go on the outside. Um, together we can get through anything and you can do something like stay wonderful or you know happy news or whatever you want to put on there. I decided to go with the birthday just because um, I use that a lot and I use thank yous the most. And I liked this have a perfect birthday and you are a real blessing to everyone around you. We were joking at stamp camp that a lot of people didn't want to put this on the inside because the people they sent the blessing the birthdays to they didn't want to say this to. So you can ch change it up. And then I thought we would use this little flower, or you could do some bees, whatever you want to put in here. Now you might think to yourself that there's nothing small enough here for a square, but we're using this one, and I'll show you that it's perfectly fine because it's going to go outside the square, and that is okay. So I'm going to ink this up, and again, I'm going with basic gray. So I'm going to ink up. Oh, too much ink. I re-inked the pad. It's very juicy. Hopefully I don't catch too many corners. Okay, so I'm just going to look around at this, and I don't want the stem. I'm going to go right for that big flower right there and kind of let that be the star. So see, even though it's bigger than the, the square, I got what I wanted out of it, and I like that. So let's put that aside. And then for another one, I wanted to do the little strip of flowers, that small little strip. What did I do with it? Here we go. And I like that because then at least I have a place that I can still sign my name so I can not have all of it. Now if you decided that the inside was so full and you didn't, you maybe you have things you want to put there and you're thinking, where do I sign my name? How Pat did it, um, she had a space on the back or she wrote me a note which was nice. Um, but you can, and she did it on a post-it note, but you can add a piece of light colored cardstock to the back and you can make that the area where you sign your name. Okay, so we've got that. And then on my other square, I'm going to do that your blessing because I feel there are blessings in my life. <laughs> okay. And sorry if my head gets in the shot. I want to make sure this is straight. I don't think I put the stamp on my block straight, so I'm, I may be crooked. All right, not too bad. I think it 
slightly crooked. Okay, and then on the fourth one, I'm using some die cuts so that they kind of mirror what's on the front of the card. So I've got my stamping done. And let me put the stamps out of the way so I don't accidentally get ink on my project. I do need one more stamp, so let me do that while I'm thinking about it. I need the, the uh, front of my card, which is the happy birthday. And like I said, I just did that on a really skinny little strip. I know I have some on my desk here. Where are you? There we go. A little skinny strip. And it's a half an inch wide, and I just grabbed it from my scrap pile, so I'm not sure how long it is, but you can just make it however long you need for your sentiment. So I'm going to get rid of this so I don't make a mess. Okay, and then like I said, I'm going to use blender pens. So let's get all this out of the way. I don't need this one. And let's color. So a blender pen, if you're unaware, is sold in a pack of three. Now you don't need one for every color, so that would give you six tips. But you still, you don't need it for every color, and I'll show you why. You can ink up. Now my ink pads are a mess because I paint out of them. <laughs> so uh, don't worry about that. But it's a clear, it's clear. I'm not sure it's in there. I looked it up once. I thought it was some kind of glycerin, but I'm not 100% sure anymore. I can't remember. But it's a clear little liquid, some kind of ink, and you're going to use it to pick up some of your ink from your pad or if you want to make yourself a palette by, um, if you have little small blocks, you can dip a block you know, in your ink and then work off of that if you don't want to make a mess out of your palette. In fact, I can show you what I mean. See, then you can work right off of that block. Now, when you first pick up ink, it's going to be strong. See? And then as you work it, it's going to get lighter. See how it's getting lighter? So keep that in mind. Now, when I first pick it up, because it's really strong, I go for like where I want that strong color. So on a leaf, that would be at the vein. And like maybe at the area where it's going underneath something. So I start there. Because that's where the strongest color is. And then as it starts to fade out, like this, then you can work your way. Now, if you feel like it's not fading out fast enough, you can move on to another leaf. And then as that ink is starting to fade out, go up and finish your leaf. There we go. Okay, so you've got it. Now that's even darker than I wanted, so I won't pick up um, as much ink this time. I, and I don't go for the area here. See how there's like so much ink there? I would go over here where there's hardly any ink because I like to have more control. Okay, so again, I'm going to start that vein and do the areas that are shadowed. And then as my ink comes off, you can go. Now, I am noticing I didn't allow this to dry. Normally I stamp first and then do other things and then it doesn't, but my gray is smearing a little bit. So let me let it dry for a second. In the magic of television, it will be dry. The magic of video. Okay, I'm coming back. All right, so let me, I got a little fuzz on here. Oh, I forgot I had that block. <laughs> I think that's all. Oh, I forgot a leaf. Oh, two leaves. I forgot two leaves. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my next color. And I'm using colors straight from. Um, the paper, the designer series paper that I chose. So to clean off the green, all I'm doing is just kind of going like this and getting that green, green away and I'm going to do um, the centers of my flowers. And here I want them to be darker so I'm kind of tapping. This one's a bigger center, so I want some lights and dark, so I'm going to pick up some more dark and go right heavy in that middle. Okay. And then 
I thought it would be fun to do something different on these flowers and make them kind of the opposite. So I'm going to do the petals in the pale papaya and the centers in the fresh freesia. And I don't remember what color I made those. I think I made them fresh freesia. So let me do the centers in the pale papaya. Okay, and then again, I'm not having to pick a new pen. I'm just going to go like this until that pale papaya doesn't come off anymore. And then I'm going to move right into fresh freesia. Okay, so where it's dark, I want it to be next to the flower. So I'm going to go right next to the flower and add that dark. And then as, like I said, the ink is starting to fade away, then I'm going to fill in the tips of the petals so it's darker in the center. And if you feel like you need a little more dark, like this petal didn't get enough darkness, you can go ahead and add some more highlight. And if it's kind of a light color, just you can always do light if it's still left on your pen, and then add dark next. Just realize you're going to get darks and lights with this pen. So if you want consistency, you want it all one shade, you can come off on your paper to lighten it or keep picking up ink to darken it. So it's kind of like a watercolor, but it's a little, um, it's a little more forgiving because you're not using water, so it's a little more controlled and yet you have that kind of watercolor look. And it's nice because you can do it on basic white cardstock, whereas watercolor you do need a cardstock that's um, heavy enough to withstand watercolor techniques, whereas here I'm just using straight um, basic white cardstock. All right, so I've got my colors there. Now let's finish this one off. Again, heavy ink right where these like lines are, kind of going heavy. And then you can go light around. And I'll speed up for the rest of these. Okay, my coloring is done, so let's uh, assemble our squares. So we've got four squares. This is the one I wanted to do um, some die cuts on. So here I'm going to, and I cut these out ahead of time so that people at stamp camp would not be all standing in line for the cutter. There's like 12 of us. So let's see, I wanted one, two greeneries, a big and a little. some purple, fresh freesia. That green is garden green, by the way. I'm not sure if I said. And then I wanted to bring in some of that pale papaya, so that is what the flowers are. <laughs> it's stuck to the table. There we go. Okay, and then I added a B. Now the B 
is cut right from that same designer series paper and there are dies that actually cut out the B so yay I just cut out some more here so then you've got a die cut for all three B's oh I wanted to add a B to another one of the squares too and then I'm going to add another B the third B on the front okay Okay, there are my four squares. So how we fold this, we're going to have this as our bottom, so then we have to come towards us, away from us, towards us. And then on our card base, what you're going to do is put adhesive, now see this one, put it on the back. Make sure your opening is going upwards before you stick it down. You don't want it going the wrong way. Okay, so upwards and put it right in the middle and I'm lining it up with that um, cardstock line with my designer series paper stick it right down in the middle and now you're going to um, put adhesive on this one right and then you're going to close your card and then it is where it needs to be yay Okay, and now you're just going to add these. Now when you're adding these, keep in mind that you don't want adhesive behind the strip, right? Because then it'll stick when you close your card. So I'm going to assemble like so. I'm going to put the adhesive down the center like that. And then this one doesn't matter quite so much because it's going to go oops, on the whole base here. And then this is where you're going to put from Beth. I love ya. Or something like that. <laughs> okay, so our inside is done. Really fun, right? And you can do this with so many different stamp sets. You can make it cute for kids or baby. Or I was thinking of going this way, and it looks like a banner where you're hanging it like for a baby shower. And you can put, um, you know new baby or little baby things or I don't know my husband and I were just saying we needed a new baby not for us but like for some someone we know like my brother-in-law or my nephew just got married we need a baby in our lives my youngest is now um, 13 my oldest is now 20 so we need we need a baby all right so now see how I just put adhesive right here you don't have to make yourself crazy putting adhesive behind all of that I kind of like that they're loosey-goosey all right, so I'm putting down just one of each color. I wanted there to be some fresh freesia. I wanted there to be some garden green, and I added some white just to give myself kind of a little bit of everything. Oops, so if you need more adhesive, you can just run it right on top because that's going to be covered by my Have a Perfect Birthday, like so. And then my B. Use my head if it's in the shot again. <laughs> I'm going to put my little bee here, and I don't know, I have the other one kind of going away from the flower, but I think it should be facing towards the flower like that. All right, and then my happy birthday. Um, I could either try to decide if I wanted to just make an angle cut or if I wanted to do a cut like I did before, a little flag cut. Okay, another couple things I did. I added some bling. Let me throw this on real quick. And um, I added a little bow out of some white baker's twine. And then I even added some more bling because I wanted those bee wings to kind of have some shimmer like a real bee, a bee wing. My gray is super juicy, so I want to not smear it. There we go. Okay, so I've got some metallic dots. These might be all gone by the time you look at the new catalog because it's we're right on the cusp of old and new catalog. And I just kind of threw some of these down. Three is always a good number, it seems. Oops, I've got some stuck together here. Let's get one over here and maybe one on the wood. Okay, so I've got that. And a little bit of Baker's Twine bow. I'm probably going to fast forward during my bow tying because I am a terrible bow tire. I'm going to do a double bow. 
and sometimes it takes me two or three times. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I doubled it up, and when I do a double bow, I find it easier to do it the bunny ear method, where you do two bunny ears and cross them. It's hard sometimes with a double bow because there's so many little strings going around. There we go. Hey, I did it in one. Look at that. All right, and then I'm going to pull the tails. make it the size I want. All right, in one. And then I'm going to attach that with a glue dot. As if it's kind of holding the stems on my flowers. And then again, a little bit of Winkostella on those bee wings. give them a little bit of shimmer. And I should have done that before gluing them down because every once in a while I might get a splot. But I think I think I'm good. All right. So I don't know if you're going to see the Wink of Stella on the bee wings. You can see it in person, but I'm not positive that it's going to show up on video. So here is my card. I hope you like it and you'll give this fold a try. If you do, I'd love to see it. Share it on my Facebook page. I have a Facebook page called Beth's Paper Cuts Idea Sharing Group. And so if you make cards like this, share it on the group page. I would love to see it and so would everybody else. So um, we'd like to see that. And um, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and come back again. Bye.